Hey gang. I'm oh, just checking in. Just gonna be gluing together another blank for a series of cutting boards, just to have them on hand for when we plane them and, and, and do all that stuff. I think I'm gonna take some of these into the school to plane them there. Then it'll be over in a heartbeat. In fact, I've got some of these that are actually quite thick, but huh. maybe I'll save those bigger ones for something else. But anyway, hope everybody's doing well at home. And uh, I hope everybody's also been hearing some of the some of the positive news that's out there. I'm not going to quote any good news, but of course, there's been some good stuff going on. You know, ease of restrictions, landscaping places opening up. It's uh, it's looking good. It's looking good. I mean, don't let this stop you from doing what we're supposed to be doing anyway. And that's you know, wash your hands, keep distant, stop the dog from barking. But uh, everybody seems to be doing pretty well with what's going on and I think we're going to come out of this very very well. I mean there are some people whose lives were really negatively touched pretty hard and you know there's people getting sick or people getting uh, well, just put in a tough spot because of this financially and, and, and socially. You can't see your grandparents and oh, but it looks like we're going to be coming through it and summer might be a lot better than everybody was fearing it was going to be. Anyway, uh, what we've been doing, what I've been doing this week so far is getting ready for uh, the Muskoka chairs. Now, both classes are going to be doing Muskoka chairs. Um, and I will have another video on, on the bandsaw that Mr. Tenner was kind enough to loan us. Um, it's a really great bandsaw. It's from his shop. If you've been in the auto shop, you've seen that, that bandsaw. But the bandsaw that we had was repaired several times. Thank you, Mr. Trask. Um, it was broken by grade nines. Not going to say any more on that. But the bandsaw blade was uh, broken, repaired, broken, repaired. And every time you repair it, you make it a bit shorter. So it's it's amazing what happens when you change a blade. You get used to what the blade is. Like for instance, on my my little saw here, it's a brand new blade. And when you start using it, it's oh my gosh, this blade is so fantastic. It's excellent. And then you use it for weeks and that turns into months. And then you realize like, oh, man, okay, I still love this saw, but it slowly got dull over time. And then you change it and realize it's a brand new saw. Oh, this is wonderful. Did the same thing with the bandsaw blade the other day. I, I bought a couple of new bandsaw blades, put it on and just started mowing through that pine on the bandsaw to cut out the pieces for the Muskoka chairs. I started mowing through it like it was nothing. It was butter and it was, it put me in a good mood weird I know but I'm going to turn the camera around so you can see what exactly I did just yesterday I pre-cut a bunch of arms for four chairs plus and the big legs and this is one of the support pieces that I was using a lot of scrap wood and thought I can't throw that away and there were small pieces in my little tracer bin right here that I have to start coming up with a, a, a more effective system so what I wanted to do is I wanted to to pre-cut a lot of the, the curved pieces and I made a couple of jigs which I'll have a demonstration on that not too long from now um, on how to put the correct taper on the back slats for the Muskoka chair. I'm really excited about getting the first one done and uh, showing you guys the system. So that's coming. I'm going to be working on that this week. Put our little camera back in place here. Working on that this week. So we're going to start moving on that. Uh, this is going out to both classes, by the way, because the woodworking project um, is going to be a Muskoka chair. So construction, you're going to enjoy, I hope, <laughs> you're going to get to experience um, putting together a project as though it were a small business. Because, I mean, the only thing you change in the structure of a business is the product that you sell. It's funny, you take a business class upstairs, I believe, with Mr. B, and he will teach you, you know, a lot of the ins and outs about how to run a business and, and what goes into it and the marketing and the structuring and the, and the, the math and the taxes. I'm, I'm sure it gets pretty involved. But once you have the understanding of, of that and you have a good, clear head on how to run a business, let me put it this way. I knew a guy, actually I've known several, but one in particular, when I was in my 20s, late 20s, uh, we were talking about what we wanted to do when we grew up. 
and yes, I'm still trying to figure that out. But he and I had a conversation about, uh, Steve, his name was Steve. Steve and I had a conversation about what we were going to do. And he says, I want to run a business. And at that time, I, I didn't really have a, any insights into running a business. And I said, well, what type of business would you like to run? And he said, it doesn't matter. He just wants to run a business. And I, that was the first time I had ever thought about it. And I clued into the fact that running a business is a career path all in like in and of itself. So when we talk about transferable skills in, in school, when you learn how to add and multiply, just in math, you apply that everywhere in your life. Well, the more you learn in school, the more complex the, your skill set gets. And then your skill set, you may not know it, becomes highly transferable, especially the more detailed and the more uh, the, the larger your toolbox of skills becomes, you can take your set of skills and apply them everywhere. It's, it's amazing. I had another friend of mine, he was a real estate agent, still is, and he was selling houses and then he went into appraising houses and then he would fix and flip houses. Now those are all connected, but then one day he decided, he says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to open up a biodiesel plant because he knew the economics. He knew how to run a business, the advertising, the, the bookkeeping, the selling, um, it was, it's, it's continually eye-opening. So getting back to what we are going to be doing, very base level, we're going to have a small little, little business venture here where we're going to learn how to efficiently, you know, cut the pieces and, and stack the pieces and place orders um, and, and fulfill the orders. Take it from there. Anyway, I'm going to get to gluing this together. I'm not going to bore you to tears with applying the glue, but but I do ask you guys to do me a favor. Take a look at some of the assignments that I've, I've posted on Google Classroom, and remember, there are opportunities for me to bump your mark, and hopefully they're entertaining. Uh, I have to say thank you to several people I've asked uh, when I said, would you, I asked them the question on the, the Google Meet, which we're having another one Friday. The question that I posed to them was, would you rather me post professional professionally made videos from YouTube where you know somebody has put it together a video really well with with clips and fades and all that or would you rather see me babbling on and on they were kind enough they could have been lying it's okay they uh, they told me they'd rather see me because there's more of a personal touch and it's kind of funny well I'll try and keep things funny but moving forward today I'm going to be creating a little system that I will touch base with you guys again and, and show you what our system is going to be for uh, taking orders for the Muskoka chairs, filling the orders, um, and working in our homemade factory on how to cut all the pieces out, get our stock built up of, there are 30 pieces that go into it. So we need 30 pieces for every single chair. Some big, some small, some complex, some straightforward, literally straight, but we need a system. And wouldn't it be great to have a stockpile where we say, I need one of these, 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 and you put it over and then you send it to the assembly line. And then you take a day to keep all your stock up. And when somebody places an order, you just go to the pile. Anyway, we'll get more into detail about that a little bit later. You guys have a great day. Take a look at some of those assignments. And remember, I've posted one uh, video just yesterday and it walked you through how to open up one of the Word documents that I'll post with the, uh, with the assignments, and it's a lot easier to fill out a chart than to create something all on your own, such as, this is for the woodworking class, how to fill out that chart that is all the information that you could find um, from the links that were part of that Word document, all the information that you could find on classifying different types of wood and identifying wood by sight and touch and smell, watching a, a video and, and then the hardness test, the Janka hardness test. That was a really interesting thing. Anyway, um, you guys have a great day. Be safe and hopefully we'll see you before long. Who knows? We might even be able to get back to school before the end and play around in the shop and really start cranking out some Muskoka chairs and have some fun. Hopefully. You guys be safe.